Good afternoon. In this video, I want to uh, point out that uh, replacement theology is only half right. Uh, they go to uh, Matthew uh, 21, 20 and 43. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, what was taken from them was the kingdom of God. That's what these guys can't see. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Uh, you go to... Uh, Romans 14, uh, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, if you look at the book of Matthew, what shows up in the book of Matthew is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, excuse me, which doesn't show up in any other gospels. And uh, the kingdom of heaven is a, a literal physical kingdom. That's what's going to happen in the millennium. They get that. Those are unconditional covenants made from Abraham, David, and of course the uh, new covenant, uh, Jeremiah 31, 31, Hebrews 8, 8. But uh, if you go to uh, Daniel chapter 2, uh, 44, In the days of, the, of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That's where we get the kingdom of heaven from. The term shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That's a little physical kingdom. Let me read that again. In the days of these things shall the God of these things, of the, oh, excuse me, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, the physical kingdom. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and shall stand forever. It's talking about the millennium and eternal kingdom. When Jesus Christ takes over as the king of kings and lord of lords. So the uh, replacement theology people have it half right. The church has replaced Israel as a, uh, a nation. Uh, First uh, Peter 2.9 uh, talks about that. Let's see here. But you are a chosen generation, chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What happened to the Jews is they lost their spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, as a, as a group. Now, of course, individual Jews are saved and put into the body of Christ. But the church now receives a spiritual kingdom, and Israel receives the kingdom of heaven. That is going to be a literal physical kingdom. Those Abrahamic, Davidic, and New Covenants are going to be fulfilled They're unconditional. And the kingdom of heaven is not the kingdom of God. They overlap. Because as 10, when the kingdom when the kingdom of heaven is established, the kingdom of God will be uh, in it as well. That's why you have people resurrect their bodies walking in it. The angels will be in it. So you'll be interacting with uh, flesh and blood people. But that's where the, the replacement people get all fouled up. They think the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, as we saw in Romans 4, 14, 17. It's, it's, it's a spiritual kingdom. It's not a physical kingdom. So the Jews are going to receive the literal physical kingdom. Uh, and that those, those uh, uh, conditions are going to be fulfilled. That's the whole issue of Daniel 70th week being fulfilled. Those are for Jews. Tom Jacob's troubles, the Mitra period. Jacob's trouble, not the church trouble. Of course, they say we're raptured before that. That's so. That's their big thing before the, the mid-trip period. Um, but the point is, is that the two different kingdoms being established and looked at. The other three gospels, the kingdom of God shows up. The kingdom of heaven, as I mentioned, the book of Matthew is a book about the Jewish mess messianic Jesus Christ as King of Kings, the uh, the Messiah. And uh, we know that because the lineage goes back to Abraham. In the uh, book of Mark, no, there's no uh, there's no lineage because it's, that's, that's uh, Jesus Christ as a servant. In the book of Luke, the lineage goes back to Adam. So the book of Luke is a general gospel to all mankind. And the book of John obviously goes back to uh, Jesus Christ as the word who became flesh. God manifest in the flesh. So you guys got to keep in mind what, what the books are writing about. Each gospel has particular emphasis. And the book of Matthew is the book of emphasis on the Jew. 
that Jesus Christ came to be their king and they rejected their king. And that's why he took away that spiritual kingdom. But their, their kingdom that they're going to receive, the kingdom of heaven, which is, by the way, they were looking for, the kingdom of heaven. They weren't looking for a suffering Messiah. They were looking for a king. And uh, that's why they that's why they, they, they don't understand what Jesus Christ was talking about, him going to the cross and, and uh, paying for the sins of the world. They didn't understand that. The, the idea was, we, they were, they, when we look at the, uh, what people believe in, they believe, that, they believe that Israel was going to be redeemed as a nation. That the Messiah was coming to redeem, as, redeem them as a nation, not, as, not individuals. Now, so that, 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 that was a different point of emphasis. But the reality is, when you're looking at replacement theology, they'll take it to verses that show that. That's, what they, that's where they take the people as the verses to that. But they don't show them the other verses. They don't show them the kingdom of heaven. See, they want, they want to deny it. That's a big thing in modern scholarship. The kingdom, they're just synonymous. Well, why is the kingdom of heaven only used in the uh, book of Matthew? The kingdom of heaven is very clear, a literal king. Obviously, from Daniel 2.44. So it's only used in the book of Matthew because it's, it's dealing with the Jewish millennial kingdom. Has Jesus Christ come in as the king to set up that kingdom? Uh, and so there's a spiritual kingdom and there's a, a, a literal physical kingdom that's going to be set up. The nation, the, uh, what the Jews lost was that spiritual kingdom. That's where the Gentiles got in. That's what provokes the Jew. Uh, Anderson was talking about that in, the, in, in his uh, Luke chapter 4. He was talking about that and how the Lord will often bring up uh, to the Jews the issue of the Gentiles, that God would deal with the Gentiles. And, you know, the widow, we go to the widow who's a Gentile, and you go to uh, you heal the lepers that were Gentiles. Um, and uh, uh, not deal with the Jews. Why? Because they were fellowship. And he was telling the Jews, you know, don't, don't take for granted your relationship with God. Because I can go to the Gentiles. The Jew was set up to be a blessing to the Gentiles. That's what Romans 15 is talking about. People get all upset about the Jew, the issue of Jew. Oh, the Jewish the superior. The Jew was made to be a blessing to the Gentiles. They forgot that. That's why, you know, for instance, Jonah, he wouldn't go to Nineveh. Everyone forgets that. They all went, oh, the Zionists were all preaching the superiority of the Jew. The Jew was made to be a blessing, a, a, a way for the Gentile to be blessed by going through the Jew to God. That was the purpose, to set up one nation, one kingdom, by which all the nations of the world be blessed. It wasn't set up to, like, to, to just put them like, oh, like, you know, like they lord law of everybody. And, and, you know. No, they were meant to show the glory of God to everybody. And they were missionary people. That's why that's the book of Jonah went out to the Ninevites. The book of the, uh, and Jonah and went to, uh, it talks about going to the Ninevites and how he was reluctant was, he was to do that. Um, because he knew how the Assyrians were. The Assyrians were uh, enemies of uh, Israel. Uh, but the fact is, is that when you look at these guys, they always give you partial truths. And that's the, that's the game. Because what they'll tell you is true. They'll take you to 1 Peter 2. They'll take you to uh, the uh, in, in, in Matthew and say, see that? They lost the nation. See the nation? God took that nation away. That's exactly what they do. And then they'll, they'll go they'll go to, see, that's, we're, we're the nation. We're, that's true. But we're not getting the physical kingdom. You're not told to look for a physical kingdom. You're not told to look for the blessings. Daniel was told to look for his lot. At the end of Daniel 13, the angel tells him, Daniel, you'll stand in your lot one day. You never told that. You're talking about, you're talking about spiritual blessings. Judge the spirit of Christ. Spiritual issues. Not physical issues. The apostles, when they, before they asked the Lord, says, when do you come back to your kingdom? We don't worry about the kingdom. <laughs> We're by our judgment seat of Christ getting to the rewards. That's spiritual. So we, the whole focus has changed. But don't let these guys deceive you. There's always an element of truth in every heresy. That's how it gets sold. And the, the, the key element of, of selling a heresy is always giving you a partial truth. Leave something out. Give you to a verse. That's how they attack eternal security. That's how they attack the Trinity. That's how they attack the... The, uh, the, the, uh, the, the nature of Jesus Christ, uh, God-man being God-man. They'll attack his deity from one point. They'll attack his humanity from another point. It's always by showing you different elements by leaving out the other elements. The Bible's a very balanced book. But that's why it's, everything is contextual. So when guys are coming at you and they're, they're showing you something false, 
The answer's in there, it's true. But you have to find it because there's a balance there. And it's just a matter of digging it out. But the heretics are very clever. Satan's very subtle. He knows how to pick out verses that say, well, yeah, look at that. He did take away the nation of Israel from the, uh, from the uh, from Israel. He, yeah, we are a nation of priests. Yeah, maybe, you know, we are. We, uh, yeah, the kingdom of, the kingdom of uh, God was taken away from the Jew. That's very true. That's, that's what it says in Matthew. You know, these guys always said, that's what it says. <laughs> yeah, we know what it says. But it's two kingdoms. They didn't lose the kingdom of heaven. So I want these guys to see you. Anderson's up there. He, he's like, right. He said, he, the Lord was pointing out the Gentiles to provoke the Jew. Us getting saved, Gentiles getting saved, provokes the Jew. Irritates them. <laughs> Irritate. So they can get saved. So they can get saved. They say, well, you Christian, well, you, you Gentiles getting saved. What is this going on here? You know, we're supposed to be getting saved. You're not saved because you're a Jew. You've got to get spiritual salvation. You've got to get uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So they've got to believe in that. And uh, he, oh, yeah, and one thing on Anderson, we say someone quick, he had a thing in that Luke thing he talks about, you know, going to evangelize Muslims. And it's like, you know, yeah, there's people out there, people out there saying we shouldn't evangelize Muslims because uh, they're, you know, anti-Israel or whatever. I never heard any Baptist ever say anything about not evangelizing Muslims, just liar. But Baptists believe in evangelizing the entire world, Jew and Muslim. So the idea that he puts up that idea, you know, like the Zionist people are called pro-Israel, so we're going to say don't, don't evangelize. That's the most ridiculous bunch of baloney I've ever heard. But that's what they've got to put up these lies about people who are pro-Israel. They're going to say, oh, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're not going to evangelize. Best thing to for the uh, a Jew would be for a Muslim to become Christian. You know, most Christians are not anti-Israel. They're not crazy people like Anderson. He's, he's, he's a bunch of freaks. That's what I call them. A fringe group, bunch of nutcases, anti-Israel. Now, is, is God, you know, is God dealing with, you know, uh, are the Jews God's chosen people and where they are? No, they're out of fellowship. But they got to be in the land when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. That's what they're going to get. The fact that when they return, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, they're going to be there. So they got to be back in the land. So this is all set up in order, you know, for these events to happen. But the idea is, of course, every, every person, Jew or Gentile, Muslims should be saved. You should get the gospel so they can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And no Baptist is ever going to say, don't, don't evangelize a Muslim. It's idiotic. It's a lie. But that's what, you know, that's what Stephen Anderson does. He's a very clever liar. And the idea, the whole idea of uh, the Anderson cult is to try to sell a uh, anti-Zionist agenda. You know, and that, uh, oh, he's, you know, because the IFB, you know, who they're going after is basically, who's always been pro-Israel. Like, you know, all way, like John Hagin said, you know, the Jews don't need the gospel, which is a lie from hell also. Of course they need the gospel. And uh, they're going to suffer great, great horrors uh, when the Antichrist shows up and they're going to have the covenant broken and suffer all these things and two-thirds of them are going to be wiped out. And um, those who are left will see the Lord returning and they'll, they'll believe. And then all Israel will be saved in that sense. But I'm going to stop here and put this up. Remember, when you're dealing with liars, always look for the opposite, the, 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 what's not being told, the full story. That's like, you know, the fake media, the lying media. They always give you partial truths. They're not telling you, you know, the context will change, the truth. You know, they always give you something, you know. So, you know then they can say, well, it's true. No, well, it's not totally true. That's why we give it a witness to tell the truth, the, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the whole truth. And so liars will give you a partial truth. In order to give you a drop, be able to drop context. So we hear these guys talking about, yeah, I see that. Let's go to Matthew, the verse in Matthew. Uh, there's a verse here, Matthew. Uh, King of God. Let's go ahead, sir. Matthew is, let's see, yeah. Matthew yeah, 21, uh, 21, 20, yeah, 2043, okay, 2143, I was, I always forget that verse, 2143, therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof, and it was, it's given to the Gentiles, and that's your period, the Jews had a first crack at it, 
but they were becoming Christian. They were into the body of Christ. They were no longer Jews. So they were losing that covenant identity with Judaism. Um, but the fact is, is that then they began resisting the Jewish pe people, began resisting the gospel, resenting Gentiles getting in, and that unity of the Jews, the Jews and Gentiles becoming one, because they always had a predominance in the in that uh, view, uh, and it was a uh, uh, very difficult for them to accept that. And then Gentiles began moving in, and the majority of the body, the body of Christ is not Gentile. But so, something to keep in, in mind when we, when we hear these guys, they're going to take you to verses that are true. They're going to take you to verses that are true, but they're not completely true. Amen, thank you. They're completely true in the sense that those verses are true. Let me stop here. The verses are absolutely true, but they're not giving you the, 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 the complete story. They're not giving you the complete truth. The other verses that balance those verses. And so you'll always see guys, heretics will always give you one angle and ignore the other angle. And that's, you know, so like, uh, as I said, they'll emphasize one point at the expense of another point. Don't be deceived that way. Uh, and so even if you look at a verse, you say, yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly what it says, you know. And they say, so you got to believe the verse says, you know. Yeah, we do believe what the verse says. We want to see other verses that also balance that verse and uh, put that verse in the correct context. Amen. Thank you.